This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll be talking about orientation change events and scroll events. If you want to follow along, open up eventsorientation.html from your working files folder. Let's start with orientation change. Now, orientation change only makes sense on mobile devices where you can rotate them left and right. Let's go ahead and add an event listener to listen for that orientation change event. So we'll say jQuery document dot live, and we're going to listen for orientation change. When the orientation change event fires, we're going to run the code that's inside of this function. Let's just go ahead and alert the orientation has changed. If we save that, go back to iOS and refresh. Now when you take the phone and rotate it left or right, it pops up with an alert that says the orientation has changed. So that's how orientation change events work. Now if you want to know whether you're in portrait or landscape mode, instead of alerting the orientation has changed, let's go ahead and alert instead window.orientation. Now on mobile devices, orientation is actually a property on the window object. That's why we can alert that. And if I go back and refresh, now when I rotate into landscape mode, you'll notice it returns a number, negative 90. That means negative 90 degrees. If I rotate back to zero, and then I rotate left again, I get positive 90. So that's how you can tell what the orientation of the phone is. Now let's write a little bit of code to make this a little bit prettier. We'll say if window.orientation is equal to zero, alert portrait. Else, alert landscape. Now if I go and refresh, and I rotate the phone, it says landscape. If I rotate it back, it says portrait. Now let's have a little bit more fun with this. I'm going to open the same page up in Chrome, eventsorientation.html, and let's take a look at the theming classes that are applied to this page. I'm going to inspect element, and I'll look at this page here, and you'll see the page has the class of UI page, UI page active, and UI body C. Now, if I were to change that class to UI body A, now I get a darker color. What if I change that to UI body A whenever we're in landscape mode? Let's go ahead and try that. In this case, I'll target it with UI page active, and then I'll go ahead and add or remove the classes I need to add and remove. So, if it's in landscape, I'll use jQuery and target UI page active. And that's a class. And I'm going to say dot remove class. And that class was UI body C. And I'll say dot add class UI body A. I'm going to remove these alerts here. And I'm going to do exactly the opposite thing when we turn to portrait mode UI body A and add class UI body C. What this should do is change the class from UI body A to C or back to A, depending on the orientation. Let's take a look at that in the iOS simulator. We'll refresh, rotate, and sure enough, the entire page gets darker. And we'll rotate back, and sure enough, the entire page gets lighter again. So that's how you make things happen on orientation change. Let's take a look at one more example here, and we're going to take a look at scroll events. Now we have two scroll events, scroll start and scroll stop. So I'm going to say jQuery document dot live scroll start. And we'll run this function when that event gets dispatched. Now one thing you should know about scroll start and scroll stop is that iOS will not actually allow DOM manipulation during scrolls. That means if you want to change something when the user starts scrolling, there's no current way to do that. 
It's still useful to have the scroll start event, however, if you want to, say, keep track of the time the person started scrolling. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. In here, I'm just going to create a global variable. Now, if I were making a fully fledged application, I would have a namespace and I would put this variable inside of the namespace. For the purposes of this example, I'll just make it a global. And I'll call this scroll start time. And in here, I'm going to say scroll start time equals a new date. Now, whenever the scroll start event is dispatched, it's going to create a new date and it's going to store it inside of scroll start time. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the scroll end. I'll have my event listener. And I'm going to have a variable called scroll end time. Now it'll create a new date when we start scrolling, it'll create a new date when we finish scrolling, and then I want to alert the difference. By alerting the difference between these two times, I'll be returning how long the scroll actually took. Now the way you subtract dates is you say scroll start time dot get time, and that'll get you a number of milliseconds. And then you can do the same thing for scroll end time and you can subtract them. So we're getting the number of milliseconds at the end of the scroll, and we're subtracting the number of milliseconds at the start of the scroll. Now I'm going to store that in a little variable here. Scroll duration equals that. I'll go ahead and add scroll duration up here. And now I can alert the scroll took plus scroll duration plus ms for milliseconds. I'll save that. We'll try refreshing and let's see if this works. Scroll start, scroll end, and nothing happened. Turns out actually I just realized it's not scroll end, it's scroll stop. That is why you always want to check with the documentation to make sure you get that right. Let's try that once more. Refresh, scroll start, scroll stop, and indeed it pops up the scroll took 1480 milliseconds. I'll press OK. If I do a faster scroll, now that only took 378 milliseconds. So there are some real life examples of how you might use orientation change, scroll start, and scroll stop.